Hi everybody, this is Cameron from BIAB Homebrew Adventures. Hope everyone's doing well out there. I wanted to put a video out there just showing you kind of a change I've done to how I'm clarifying my beer. In my earlier video I was showing you how I was using filtering and using gravity only down my stairs and although that worked really well and saved a lot of time compared to using like a bright keg and CO2 it was still time consuming and I had to clean the lines and I had to clean the filter bowl and it became to be a pain in the arse so what I ended up coming up with is just looking into using gelatin and gelatin does as good a job uh, for very little expense and very little time and that made me kind of look at my fermenter and I don't know about you but I kind of like having an airtight fermenter and they just don't make a good brew bucket that you get online or at a brew store that's airtight and if it is airtight it's got that snap-on lid which is hard to get off and on so I found a seven gallon bucket at US Plastics and a lid called a gamma lid which goes on a five gallon six gallon or seven gallon bucket and it has a gasketed ring along with a screw-on gasketed lid which then you drill out with your half inch hole and so the other thing I did was I took the seven gallon bucket and I raised the spigot a little bit higher than what you would find with a normal fermenter bucket which gave me total control over when I was kegging with it to keep the tube way down low and so uh, the other thing with the airtight lid was I like seeing what's going on I like seeing it bubble I know that's not a true indication of fermentation but you know at the beginning especially I'd like to see things moving and I hated having a, a brew bucket that had just kind of a loose lid or one that I'd try to clamp down and I wouldn't see anything happening uh, so uh, what I did with this is the Scamma airtight seal really allows the the airlock to show movement right away when fermentation starts and throughout the whole process I just feel more confident that I have an airtight seal so here's uh, my bucket that I got I put all the notes of where I got stuff in the comments of the video um, I hope it is informational for you and that you can get something out of it Prost So here we are with just a plain old food grade seven gallon bucket. And I guess really the difference is a five gallon bucket starts about right here. And you can see my five gallon line. And then six gallons is right here. And five and a half is just underneath. So I had to graduate it myself, but big deal. All I really care about is five, five and a half, and six. And then down here is where I made my biggest change was I raised my spigot higher than just a half gallon and what this allowed me to do is because I'm cold crashing and using gelatin I raised my spigot a little higher and then as I would pour my beer out of the spigot I would actually miss all the trube and the gelatin clears it just as good as filtering and all I do is use a half teaspoon of Knox gelatin with a half a cup of water get it up to about 150 degrees 145 degrees preferably and then mix it in pour it in the beer as I'm cold crashing and I'll put some notes in my video but all I had to do to make this bucket really nice was add this ring it's called a gamma lid it goes on any five six or seven gallon bucket and that ring snapped on and then this is the seal this is actually I drilled out the grommet I've got a gasketed seal and this goes right on top of here and just screws on I screw it down tight and it is sealed. That is so comforting to have a seal.
not only for fermentation, but just being able to see the airlock move. Let's be honest. If you don't see the airlock moving, you're like, what's going on? So I know I've been primarily using US 05. This is like probably my seventh batch. And um, I just uh, have had really good luck with it. It's a dry yeast. I haven't gotten into the coal yeast and the liquid yeast yet. But anyways, I got my thermometer there. Got my spigot, a good sealing bucket, and that's all you really need for a good fermenter. And I'll put the links for all this, but I bet you $10 and some odd cents for the bucket. The thermometer was whatever, the spigot was whatever, and the lid was at like Menards for like 7 bucks. So, anyways, just want to let you know that I'm not filtering anymore. I'm using gelatin, and I'll put notes in my video. And also, I am cold crashing like I used to, but my beer is nice and clear. I don't have to go through all the cleaning of the lines, all that kind of stuff, and all for little money and what I have invested in here. So, and I do this all with brew in a bag, so I'm using one vessel. So we just keep trying to make everything more efficient. And actually, after everything's said and done, I'm probably getting about 70 to 74 percent efficiencies through uh, brewing a bag. So, cheers. If you have any questions or comments, uh, send me a note. Thanks. Well, here is an example of how I do keg with it. You can see how the spigot is higher than normal. And what I do is I just take the beer in and I made a little line up to the spigot and I just leave the cap similar to the way I do with the filtering that I did up the stairs but I'm just allowing it to come out of that spigot. Now here's that gamma lid I was talking about. It seals real good and I dry hopped and uh, now it's done. I hit my FG really well. I was at like 6.4% alcohol. And you see if you can see here. But I can tip this when it gets down to the spigot. And I'll have plenty of room to maneuver around the tube. But uh, this is a food grade bucket. So I can just clean it with some caustic. And uh, not scratch it up. But... Uh, Works out really well for a cheap fermenter that's really good sealed. And uh, again, in the links down below or the comments, I'll have uh, where I got all the stuff to make it. Cheers!